Okay, everyone, here's uh, another project I'm working on. It's my, uh, one of my NESs, and what I've done is I've disconnected pin 4 on the lockout chip. And by doing that, you disable lockout, which causes the flashing when an NES cartridge is dirty and the connection isn't so great. The idea behind this modification is it makes it so games will play even if they're semi-dirty. Um, the only problem is, is that the these, the NES is so old, in fact, that this mod doesn't even really particularly help a lot. So if I'll turn this on. As you can see, we're getting a lightly brown screen. Um, if I take the cartridge out and put it in a few times, oops. if I hold it down, let's see what happens. Nothing there. Now we've got a gray screen. There we go. Still requires contact, and look, I lost it already. See, it doesn't fix a dirty cartridge or a bad connector. Um, years ago, I actually bought replacement Chinese connectors for NESs. If you look at this one right here, oh, this is not it. Here's another one I've been working on. I also disconnected pin 4 in this one. And if you look at this one, this has a replacement connector in it. And the difference being is when you slide this cartridge in, there's a lot of there's a lot of force back on it. We'll try plugging this one in. We just get a blue screen on this one. And even with an extra tight cartridge slot, that doesn't seem to solve the problem. Now, these, both these NESs are functional. If I took and replaced them with a new cartridge slot, like I've done with this one over here, this is an NES that I put in an N64 case. And I was actually rewiring it up. This was just a, a test NES I was doing for one of my portables. And uh, in the process of rewiring it, I actually fried it. Um, but as you see here, what I've done is I've soldered a new edge connector on it. And in doing that, it actually um, works really well. And so I guess if I really want to play an NES these days, the only way to do it is either to buy a top loader or to make them into some kind of top loader. I mean, there are some games that will work in this, but I've cleaned every, every one of these games with an eraser. That's a pretty intensive cleaning. Uh, you'll see here, I think this one sh should work. There we go. It all runs down, it all comes down to what pins the cartridge uses and whether those pins are clean or not or making good contact. You see, this game works perfectly fine. So you can play Ninja Gaiden 3, but you can't play Ninja Gaiden 2, which is sad because 2 is much better than 3. Let's see if we can get it. Okay. Let's see, another brown screen. It's completely inconsistent. At least it doesn't flash anymore. It stops the flashing. And uh, try a couple other games here. Mega Man 2, I really cleaned this one. Oh, there we go. So we got one working pretty well there. So, I mean, one of the things that really kills is actually just cleaning the cartridges. You have to take them apart, use an eraser on them if you really want them to get really clean. Uh, I would love it if there was some kind of lubricant I could put on it, like a, a deoxifying lubricant, like the standard deox spray. Um, that would keep it from having to be cleaned all the time. Well, that's it. So if you want to do this mod to your uh, NES, there's plenty of resources out there. Just search for uh, Mod Chip Disable NES in, that, in Google, and that'll bring up a couple uh, places you can learn how to do it. Just, you just all you have to do is cut the pin if you don't even want to desolder it. All right, goodbye.